So, are you thinking about building a PC and you've heard of all the news that there's no affordable computing available anymore, tariffs, prices are gonna go like that, and you're thinking, I need a PC right now. And perhaps you're thinking about buying this. The Mac Mini. This is the M4 Pro model, and this costs around $1,500 if you upgrade the SSD to one terabyte. Here's the thing, I'm a PC guy, and uh, I'm on a mission to build something that can beat this for the same price. I need you to trust me. And that's exactly what this video is for. I know the prices are bad. Is it possible to build something? Let's find out. Well, hello. So the PC is built. As you can see, I'm pretty happy how it looks. It looks pretty dark and it has a little bit of an RGB taste, but not too bad. But the thing is, now it's time to test it. Is it really better than the Mac Mini? Let's run some benchmarks. So the PC is running some benchmarks and it's running all good, but I thought I'm gonna talk about the parts that I actually used. For Motherboard, we're using the Asus TUF B760M Plus Two. For CPU, we're using Intel 14600K, which was on a fantastic deal. And when you're watching this, I hope this deal is on for you as well. Go check it out. Links in the description below. Okay, so here's me from the future. Uh, and I found something else on a sale that's maybe even better bang. So for a little bit extra, roughly around $50, $60, you can get the Core Ultra 7 265K plus a lot better motherboard for it. I'm going to leave the link in the description below, but I thought it would be unfair if I didn't mention that option because that will be so much more CPU performance than what we're getting in this video. So just letting you know, you might want to check out the links in the description below. For cooler, we're using Thermal Ride Phantom Spirit 120 EVO. For SSD, one terabyte Samsung 990 EVO. For RAM, we're using Kingston Fury Beast, 64 gigabytes of RAM, 5200 megatransfers per second. For GPU, we're using RTX 5070 from Zotac, and that is the solid version. For power supply, we're using the Thermal Take Tough Power SFX. 1000 watts for the case we're using the deep cool ch220 black version here and then we installed two extra arctic p12 max fans in the front for an extra intake now that all together should cost you roughly around 1527 pounds and 76 cents go check out the latest pricing through the links in the description below it wouldn't be a tech notice video if we didn't optimize it even further after building this i've realized there is a few places how we can save extra money if you want to make and get the same performance or just save a lot of money number one thing this gpu 
you could swap it out with Intel Arc A770 or B580. In terms of 3D performance, you wouldn't have it there, but if you're doing photo and video editing, it's incredible GPU, and that would save you roughly around $300 to $350 cheaper then for the motherboard this particular model of the b760m the matx motherboards suddenly gone up really high on price so i've left some alternatives in the description below that offer similar specs or even better as i found out just now for example wi-fi and bluetooth which is not included in this one you can roughly save around 30 to 50 dollars on the motherboard thirdly their power supply. I'm using an SFX power supply because I thought maybe it's not going to fit in this case and I wanted to, you know, have a good build experience. There's actually plenty of room and you can use an ATX power supply that's up to 150 millimeters in length. You can save extra 50 to 80 dollars. And lastly, the cooler. If you want to not get this cool looking cooler which is already very very affordable only 41 or 44 dollars something like that you can get uh, a little bit more basic version but i wanted it to be kind of all black and this rgb effect honestly very tasty to me and it performs really really well as well but you can save extra five to ten dollars on a little bit more budget looking cooler but i thought that's five to ten dollars well spent do you agree now all of these price optimization totaled if you go with the alternatives that are linked in the description below you can save between 400 to 550 dollars bear in mind if you downgrade the gpu you will lose a little bit of performance but the rest of it will not make a difference whether you go with a different cooler or power supply this will literally just save you money so links in the description below but bear in mind i can't guarantee how long these prices are going to last and if you're going to get these prices so if you're looking for something right now that's a good option now, one more mistake that i kind of made is i used the included thermal paste that came with the cooler i wish i used the different thermal paste because i don't think the thermal paste is working really really well in there um, I would have gone with a little bit of a better one, like Thermal Grizzly. Now, before we talk about the performance, there's a few reasons why people keep building PCs, not just buying a Mac. Number one, upgradability. There is so much more that you can upgrade in this PC. And that's why we went with the M80X, not an ITX motherboard, because you can just pop in extra two SSDs if you wanted to. Uh, on the Mac is absolutely impossible and costs more than three times as much as on Windows, and Windows will actually get you faster speed as well. For storage, easy upgrade, pop it in, Bob's your uncle, see you later. Or if you want RAM, boom, you've got four slots in there, add some extra ones there, 256 gigabytes for a fraction of the cost what Apple would charge theirs. You want to upgrade GPU, power supply, anything else? Lots of upgrades available. Secondly, ports i would argue you've got a lot better ports for most people because you've got a lot more usb type a ports type c ports yes on mac we've got thunderbolt but you still need to buy some accessories to get even your mouse working because there is no usb type a ports on this mac just type c in the back type c in the front so you're gonna have to buy something to get it working which is a little bit annoying and thirdly the accessories now for mac if you want perfectly scaled mac os screen you're gonna be struggling to find the perfect one for you. You're gonna either have to sacrifice on resolution or size or just cash out to get the Apple Studio or XDR displays, which are ridiculously expensive. For Windows, any screen, display, size, refresh rate, anything just works. You've got a lot more options there. You've got four display ports out, so you can connect a lot more monitors than what Mac offers. And that's just the monitor. Never mind any other third-party accessory that you might want or need. Time to talk about the performance difference between this tiny little Mac Mini M4 Pro versus this one. By the way, if you do want to pick this one up, I'm going to leave the link in the description below because you'll get it a little bit cheaper than what Apple charges for. Firstly, we're looking at CPU, pure CPU performance, the 14600K versus this M4 Pro. Interestingly, the M4 Pro is actually quite a bit faster in single core performance, about 50% faster in single core and about 5% in multi-core. So multi-core, very, very similar. Single core, quite a bit faster. Geekbench 6, looking at similar things, about 40% faster in single core and about 16 core faster in multi-core score. Looking at GPU now, Geekbench 6, we can see that the M4 Pro, yeah, quite a bit lower. We're getting about three times the performance in OpenCL scores and almost double the score in Metal or Vulkan scores. So m4 pro is quite a bit slower in the gpu fx looking at the photoshop performance adobe photoshop 
The M4 Pro is about 22% faster in overall scores, 15% faster in the general scores, and about 30% faster in the filter scores. So in that regards, yeah, in Photoshop, the Mac is quite a bit better. But at the same time, this PC is quite a bit cheaper as well, because even if we downgraded the GPU and went with all of the downgrades that I just talked to you about, we still would be getting the same score, if not faster, because Intel Arc GPUs are very fast on Photoshop. So that would make the Mac almost 50% more expensive and then our PC roughly about 20% slower. Moving on to video editing, and as much as the M4 Pro is optimized for video editing, it's got good media engines, there is no match for our PC. Our PC is a lot faster. In extended overall scores, the Mac is about 5.6% slower. Standard overall, about 54% slower. That means we're getting double the performance on our PC. Long GOP score, 30% slower. Interframe is about 10% faster. So when you're working with Apple ProRes, it's a little bit better on the Apple one there. Raw, 50% slower. GPU extended score, 63% slower. We're getting more than two and a half times the performance of GPU effects on the PC. GPU effects standard, 63% again. PC for video editing is absolutely night and day compared to this M4 Pro. Bear in mind, there is an extra caveat here. Premiere Pro version that I'm actually testing for the PC does not support all of the media engines of the 50 series. That means that 422 10-bit H.264 can be accelerated on the GPU as well. 50 series NVIDIA GPUs have the best encoders on the market, and right now this Premiere Pro version does not take full utilization of that. There's a public beta version available that you can download and use and you would actually get the performance, but I feel like for the benchmark to actually show you this, if it's not released, I kinda can't show you this fully. You can get the performance, it's not fully released, if that makes sense. So the PC would be even faster at that point. Moving on to After Effects, and in here, the M4 Pro is very, very weak compared to the PC. Our PC is twice the performance in standard and extended overall scores, literally. The 2D standard and extended, interestingly, actually works better on Mac. The 3D is a lot better on our PC because of the GPU, and the tracking standard much faster on the Mac, but then the 3D, when tracking something in 3D, that is so much faster on the PC. Almost 20 times as fast, which is ridiculous. Interestingly, tracking on 2D and tracking standard extended is faster on the Apple, but generally, overall performance, again, PC wins. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, bear in mind, all of these programs are fully compatible with both and fully optimized with both, except actually PC has a little bit of a downside because there's extra performance in, in, this, in the store here. And exactly the same here in DaVinci Resolve. I'm using a version that is not fully supporting the 50 series, but if you go with DaVinci Resolve 20, the public beta version, you will actually get extra performance what you're seeing in here. The M4 Pro is about 15% slower in the basic overall score. Standard overall, about 23% slower. Extended overall score, about 21% slower. Generally, quite a bit slower in there. I don't know why, but the AI score should not be that slow on the custom PC. It should be a lot faster, and that's why I know it's not actually fully utilized. The GPU effects, about 60% slower on the Mac. So for DaVinci Resolve, the PC is actually quite a bit better. Moving on to 3D here now. And Blender, first of all, we look at the CPU performance. Actually, the Mac CPU is really, really impressive especially at the power draw. We're looking at about 6% faster in the monster scene, about 2.6% faster in the junk sub scene, and about 4.7% slower in the classroom scene. Overall, CPU rendering on the Mac is a little bit better. But when moving on to GPU rendering, the M4 Pro has absolutely no chance. We're almost three times as fast on the RTX 5070 compared to the M4 Pro. So if you're doing any 3D, there is no match for Nvidia. Nvidia is the absolute best and smokes everybody by a long shot. So I know it shows 65% slower, but the custom PC is actually three times the performance, if that makes sense. It's absolutely ridiculous. Speedometer 3.0, which is a browser test. Interestingly, M4 Pro performs really, really well. Because of the single core performance, the browsing and everything is just super fast. 74% faster, it's absolutely crazy. We're getting close to double the performance on the Mac. When actually using this, I don't really see it as much, but on this actual benchmark, it, that 
is what it shows. And lastly, we're talking about Redshift and 3D. There are certain 3D applications that don't fully support the 50 series GPUs yet from Nvidia. So depending what you're doing and if you want to do 3D, the 50 series might not exactly give you all of the optimized performance yet. So generally, what should we say? In terms of CPU performance, the Mac wins. And if you're doing single threaded CPU performance tasks like Photoshop or Illustrator, for example, or if you're designing something or browser-based things, then the Mac is absolutely shining there and smokes the PC. If it's a mixed GPU and CPU load, the PC absolutely wins because the GPU, there's so many more encoders, they're so much better in all of this. For video editing, the PC is better. For 3D, the PC is better. So I think we're getting quite a big win here. You might be wondering, what is this noise in the background? I have been actually running GPU and CPU throttling test at the same time while we're talking about this benchmarks. So let's take a look at the temperatures. How good are they? And if it's still working. So what we can see here is our GPU is usage is 100%. We've been using all of the GPU power there that's running in here. And you can see the performance in there. I'll take the Intel Arc off. So we're pumping as much hot air into there as possible. And looking at our GPU, we're pulling 250 watts and the temperatures were just about 70 degrees. We've been running this about 12 minutes now, 11, 12 minutes. And looks like we're just now waiting for the room temperature to go up because that's it. I know that the GPU fans can go even faster, but that works completely fine. What I wanted to know is, if we are running the GPU at full utilization, can the CPU actually keep up with it? And what are the temperatures for the CPU? So right now we're pulling 180 watts, which is the limit what we can pull for the CPU. And we are actually 90, we've gone to 95 degrees, but we want 91 degrees. There is quite a bit warm air coming out. Have we thermally throttled the CPU? Just very, very briefly, as you can see, on average 0% thermally throttling, but I think we have for one second, we did thermally throttle just for a second there. But right now the core temperatures are actually pretty, pretty decent. That is not bad. Now, if you were doing this again, and I can tell you, I can improve the performance of this. If I did a thermal paste reapplication a little bit better, I could improve it. But right now, even at this, it's completely fine. So look, if we take the GPU off, let's take a look at these temperatures go down now when GPU doesn't pump hot air there anymore. We've gone to 81 to 79 degrees now. These two fans in the front here are so important. They are gonna be pulling the cold air in and pushing it towards this one. If we didn't have this, the CPU cooler would literally suck the hot air in and start pushing this around, which wouldn't be ideal. But this works really, really well there. So all together, have we accomplished what we set out to do? I think we've done great. As you saw earlier, we can optimize this a little bit more, but what do I say in conclusion? I think this guy looks really, really amazing. I think what it offers me is amazing. I'm loving that I can have it on the desk and still have a port here needed. I can expand storage if I wanted to. There's expansion slots, all sorts of things that I can do with this that I can't do with Mac Mini. There's so much more customization and optimization that I can do with this one that I can't do with Mac Mini. Would I be buying the Mac Mini or this? Because I'm doing a lot of video editing. For me, that's a no-brainer. This guy is uh, going to be the winner. Let me know which one would you pick. And if you want to check out anything, all the links are in the description below. As well as other budget PC build guides. Go check them out. They're completely for free. And if you do want to reach out, I'll always get back to my messages within 24 hours. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye-bye. God bless.